So next thing that comes uh, are the predefined methods. Now what are predefined methods? It's uh, we have already seen how to create a method, right? Uh, on our own, right? We can create methods. We can add functionalities to the method, right? And then we can call those methods as well, right? But it's not mandatory that every time we have to uh, create a new method only, right? And then use it. There are some methods that are already created. There are some methods that are predefined in Java. There are some methods that are predefined in some other API that uh, we might be integrating. Uh, uh, let's say if we talk about an API called Selenium. Selenium is basically an API. If we talk about an API called APM, API is basically APM is basically an API. Now there there are n number of things we uh, come across whenever we are working on uh, any any Java project, uh, a core Java project itself, right? So uh, there are many APIs that we generally integrate, and uh, in what API contains, they they contains. Uh, uh, a project that is already uh, built in there, there, the project that contains some classes, some methods, right? So all those methods are predefined. You need not to write those methods again, right? So you will just be uh, calling the existing functionality from that particular API. You will just be calling the method from that particular API. Now, if we talk about uh, one of the methods, this math dot, uh, this, this math is a, a class, right? This is a, a a predefined class uh, in in Java itself. If you search for this particular class, if you uh, let's say, if I navigate to open up Chrome, and write a math class Java dot. Right. I'll go to this link. Right. Now, if you see over here, you'll find there are a couple of methods available inside this uh, math class, right? Now, we can call these methods, we can call this method, and we can actually execute the functionality of this method, right? Now, same way, there is, there is a method called random. What it returns a double value with a positive sign greater than or equal. This, this method is actually uh, used to generate random numbers this this method will actually going to generate random numbers for us so this math class is generally implemented uh, to handle a lot of methods uh, mathematical calculations right and all these calculations all these things are present over here as a method so if you want to take out exponentials you'll be calling this method if you want to uh, take out uh, logarithms you'll be uh, generate logarithms you'll be calling this method right if you want to get the maximum value or the minimum value between uh, two values then you'll be calling uh, these methods right so the code is already written over there you need not to write the code again for uh, creating the maximum uh, like uh, creating uh, like calling the maximum number from from a list or from two numbers so you need not to write the code again. You just need to call this method and it will gonna do that particular job. Now same way if I uh, look at this method, uh, this is a random method, right? Uh, so if, just take a look at this method and see, uh, do I need to pass anything inside this method? There, there are no parameters, right? So I need not to pass any argument to this method. And what is the return type of this method? This is uh, basically double. Double means that it will gonna return some value with uh, a decimal like this, right? So it will gonna return as a double value. So what this method will actually gonna do? It will actually gonna uh, generate a random number which is between 0, 0.0 till 1.0, right? So it means any number uh, above 0, 0.0 and uh, till 0 0.999 it will actually gonna generate that random number the other thing over here this method is a static method right now what are statics and non-static any method uh, where we have uh, written like this public static void and the method name or public static int and the method name those are called a static method any method without this static keyword or the non-static method. So we haven't studied about what static and non-static are, although we'll be taking a look at this uh, in our coming lectures, right? But for the time being, uh, just understand it like this way. Uh, if any method is static, 
then we can call that method without creating an object of that class. We need not to create an object of this uh, math class in order to call this random method. I can directly call this method either by uh, saying math uh, the class name dot the method name directly. Right, I can call it like this. I need not to create any object of this class. So what uh, we'll do, we'll go back to Eclipse and create a new class name as random numbers right so what i'll do i'll directly call this class and i'll say math dot see i get all the list all these methods belong to the math class right and the method that we need to call is random so i can directly call this method in this way now this method was actually returning me a double value so i actually need to create a variable of double type uh, I'll say double num equal to this. So let us uh, print this num and see what it uh, actually gonna return. So let us save this and run this and it will actually gonna generate a random number. Every time I run it, the numbers will be changed. See, every time it is actually returning a random number, right? So what is the code written inside this method? We need not to worry about it, right? This is already present inside the Java library. Java is all, already uh, a stable uh, software, right? Uh, we need not to worry about what this random method, if the code written is correct or not. We know that when we call this random method, it will actually gonna return a double value, right? Any number between 0, .0 to 1.0, right? So we, uh, n number of time, we call it all the time, the value gets changed. So we only need to worry about how we need to call this method. We need not to worry about what is actually written inside this method. Now let us do some manipulations with this method. What I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this with 10, right? Now what happens, uh, this random method, it, it works up till, it prints anything above 0, .0 0.0 to less than 1.0, .0 that is 0.99. So if I uh, multiply it with 10, so uh, one decimal gets increased. So now it will gonna actually gonna work up till 9.99, right? So if I run this now, you will see that a decimal uh, is now shifted to this position. So again, I run it every time. It will gonna generate a number that should be uh, less than 9.99 only. It will not gonna generate any number above that. Same way if I uh, say multiply by 100, again it will be 99, it will actually gonna run up till 99.99. Now again if you take a look over here, uh, with the number there are many floating points that are being generated. Now what I want, I just uh, want to get uh, the value which is uh, without the floating points, right? So without any decimal. Now here the concept that uh, comes is type casting, right? So there are two things uh, that you will actually be saying. One is type cast and one is conversion, right? Either we can cast it or we can convert it, right? So uh, we're gonna look at uh, the conversion thing as well. The very first thing will be type casting it. Now what type casting, now what typecasting means that uh, what typecasting will actually gonna do it will uh, actually gonna reduce uh, this number to a shorter format so we're gonna have some loss over here right so what we need to do uh, we need to typecast it into integers something like this so I'll say n right now what this thing will gonna do, this thing will actually gonna remove all the float values from here, right? And if we are writing it like this, if I just save it, so what I need to do, when I'm typecasting it like this, I need to convert it into an integer number, right? So that I'll, I'll get some shorter value, right? So when I run this again, I got answer like zero. Why? Because we need to put a bracket over here as well, right? Based on the bot mass rule. So as soon as I run this again, 
you can see now this is only generating integer numbers right all right and same way if, if i would have not changed this to integer if i would have let it uh, remain as double then it would have generated decimal values right so i don't want to generate these decimal values i'll just change this type to integer as well right so the now now the numbers that are being generated are between 0 to 99 right now this math.random this is a very important class this math uh, class is a very important class uh, in terms you are working uh, with any api probably if i take an example of selenium api itself sometimes it happens that you need to select some random values right i got this question a lot let's say uh, i take an example i go to this link check boxes right now over here uh, in this section, you you want uh, you see four check boxes over here. Now I got a question that uh, I need to write some logic which should select any random number, any any random check box when I execute this code. Right? It could select two or it could select four. Right? So what I can do, uh, I can go over here and I can say uh, five over here. Right? Now what happens? It will actually going to generate any number between uh, 0 to 5 so see 2 3 and it return 0 it return 4 it should also return 1 it is generating it randomly right so it will not generate anything above 4 so this thing you can use and you can handle uh, anything uh, using the random numbers right so these are what pre-defined uh, methods are so if, if i show you another api uh, from uh, like selenium uh, if you go over here if you look at the java document uh, if i go to this java document right these are the classes if i pick any any one of the class uh, named as let's say i i pick up the class as default selenium although it is uh, this class uh, is almost deprecated in the market, right? But if you see over here in the method summary, you got all the predefined methods. If you want to automate your website, you can call this method check. It will actually gonna uh, uh, toggle a checkbox in a radio button. If you want to click on any link, button, checkboxes, what code that is written behind these methods, you need not to worry about that code and you just directly need to call this method. And see the return type of this method is just void right so you just need to call this method pass on the argument and it will directly going to click on that link right and in order to call this method this is not a static method right all the what are static non-static we're going to discuss about it so what you need to do you just need to create an object of this class and uh, call the method with the object preference that is all that you need to do there are some methods that are returning string as well so you can store them inside a string type right so this is how uh, we actually read the java documents as well for different from different api 